Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bulldog Insider. Fresno State played really well on Friday night. The Bulldogs beat UNLV to get their first conference win of the season. Before we get to the highlights and analysis, a few notes from Friday's game. Fresno State forced five turnovers and converted those turnovers into 28 points. Josh Hokin had three rushing touchdowns. Second time in his Fresno State career, he had three rushing touchdowns in one game. Jalen Cropper broke off that 82-yard run that was almost a touchdown. It wasn't, but it was the 10th longest run from scrimmage in program history. Also of note, the win improves the Bulldogs' record at home under Jeff Tedford to 13-2. Time now to hand things off to Scott Bemis and Cameron Worrell. Yeah, time now to go inside the game. Brought to you by Sierra Pacific Orthopedics, my weekly guest here, Cameron Worrell, 940 ESPN Radio. Cam, thanks for coming by. And just quick, quick reaction to what you saw on Friday night. That was a good win. Defensively played well. Offensively got some, thing, some things rolling. When you have a conference game at home, you have to win it, and the Bulldogs got it done Friday night. All right, let's head out to Bulldog Stadium, show you how this one played out under the Friday night lights. At Bulldog Stadium. Lots of interesting Fresno Vegas connections in this game. Of course, UNLV star running back Charles Williams had an outstanding high school career at Bullard High. Former Bulldog linebacker and assistant coach under uh, Pat Hill, Tim Skipper, now the defensive coordinator at UNLV. Rebel receiver Randall Grimes, former four star football recruit out of Vegas, younger brother of current Bulldog basketball star Nate Grimes. And a couple current Fresno State assistant coaches used to work at UNLV. Defensive backs coach J.D. Williams and running backs coach Jamie Christian. They were both on Tony Sanchez's staff with the Reds. All right, now the Bulldogs won the toss and deferred like usual. And on the first UNLV possession, it's Kenny Noblad to tight end Noah Bean, 45 yards down the left sideline, set up a chip shot field goal. It was 3 0 UNLV. After a Bulldog three and out, it's Justin Rice hitting UNLV running back Chad Magyar and forcing the fumble. Let's go. That's recovered by Lavelle Bailey, sets up the dogs at the UNLV 32. The dogs go three and out, though, and Caesar Silva would miss a 46 yard field goal wide right, one of three field goals he would miss on the night, so the dogs get nothing out of that turnover. Ensuing Rebel possession then, the Fresno State defense making another big play. Senior safety Juju Hughes, the deflection. True freshman linebacker Lavelle Bailey with the pick. And Jorge Reyna would find Carrick Wheat fall on a big third down conversion. Then it's Ronnie Rivers finishing off the drive. Seven Whoop. yards out. Cam, how about this move from Ronnie? Short running back, number 20, making dudes look silly. Reminds me of... A young Barry Sanders. Young Barry Sanders. I thought you maybe you're going with Robbie Rouse there, but you're going with Barry. I like that. All right, it's suing Rebel possession. It's Oblad to receiver Darren Woods Jr. for 23 yards. Getting to the outside, Cam. Stay outside. Stay outside, cornerback. Later in the drive, now second quarter action. Oblad to Randall Grimes. A Grimes making plays in Fresno. We've seen that before. 12 yard touchdown, 10 7 UNLV. What happened to Chris Coleman on this yeah, play, Cam? Cardinal Sin, when you're in the red zone as a cornerback, you have to stay inside the receiver. Chris Coleman lets Grimes inside. That's an easy pitch and catch. Now, the Bulldogs waste no time responding, though. That's the good news. On the opening play of their next series, they go to a play we've seen before. The Jets sweep to true freshman speedster Jalen Cropper from Parlier. How did he get caught, Cam? I don't know. I asked him after the game if he had ever been caught in his career. He said, no, i got to work on that speed. But the dude has Jets. He kind of ran into that angle instead of running away from that angle. Yeah, the only way to slow down Jalen is to slow down the video there. <laughs> now, he'd be ruled down at the one, but not to worry, because one play later, Josh Hook at the wrestler, bulldozing his way into the end zone. Woo! Extra point good. Guys make it 14-10 Fresno State. Now, Hokett would be busy near the goal line all night long. A few possessions later, the Bulldog defense going to put together a really nice series. This was good to see. On first down, Michael Walker stuffing Charles Williams there. On second down, it's true freshman corner Randy Jordan out of Tulare High. A nice tackle. And on third down, Jaron Bryant with the pass breakup. You seeing some growth out of this, D? I am. The secondary has played a lot of young pieces. They're starting to communicate and play together. And then Michael Walker back at the DN spot is wreaking havoc. All right, now Rivers had a nice punt return after these two put on a show in the stands. Setting up the dogs in good field position. And it's Reyna on the zone. Reed. It's wide open. Slide. Yeah. Slide. <laughs> 40 yards to the UNLV 11. Or he obviously on a baseball player. On the next play, it's Rivers again, squeezing that 5'8 frame through the big bodies. That's an 11 yard score. Ronnie had 51 yards on 14 carries. 21 10 Bulldogs at that point in the second quarter. Next Rebel possession, though, 
The Dogs have a big breakdown in the secondary. Noah Bean, 60 yards to the house. That made it 21-17. What happened here, Cam? Well, they schemed him. You see Bean work outside. He pushes Lavelle Bailey wide. Juju Hughes, the post safety, gets occupied by that number two receiver. Well done by UNLV working against a young freshman and a veteran safety. Love having an NFL safety by my side. It's always good. You know, but there was plenty of time for the Dogs to score again before the half, even though they got it with under two minutes to go. And that's when Jorge Reina started putting on a show to Zane Pope, then to Wheatfall for 37 more. And he'd finish off the drive with the keeper. This is some good quarterback play. It is. When he gets protection and when he can use his legs to be effective, he can take over football games. That's what he did at the end of this first half. All right, 28-17, Fresno State at the half then as the ROTC guys were busy in that first half. Now, 28-28, uh, 20 Bulldogs in the third quarter. Big play here. The fumble, Justin Rice scooping it up. This defense has been opportunistic all year long. Man, scoop and score at its basic. Justin Rice gets it done, but you're right. This defense set up this offense plenty Friday night, but this, getting points defensively, big time boost to that offense. Hey, remember, Rice, a former running back at Modesto Christian High School. Now, the Dogs will get a fourth down stop <laughs> in their own territory after a long UNLV drive. And when the offense was back on the field early in the fourth, they go up top again. Nice ball to Darion Grimm for 53 yards to the Rebels 14. And two plays later, Cam, it's the old middle screen to Jared Rice for the touchdown. Why does this play always work? Well, you see these two UNLV defenders going wide. You have to respect the quick stuff to the perimeter. But the Rice brothers getting in the end zone back to back on Friday night. Jared Rice, a huge red zone weapon. He has been his whole career. Yeah, when I caught up with these guys in fall camp, you could tell they were competitive with each other. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> Jared wanted to get in the end zone so that he, he can win the touchdown total you know over, over Justin. 12 yard touchdown made it 42 20 Bulldogs. The route was on. Next Rebel possession, Oblad feeling the pressure again, and the Fresno State D again opportunistic. Aaron Mosby with the pick. Can he get in? He better get in. He's a big body coming at you. Mosby, a great receiver at Sanger High as well. He knows how to run with the football. It only took one play to pay it off. Hokett doing the honors against 49-20. And watch the celebration here by Cam Sutton. Oh, a vertical a little too high for his own good on that one. <laughs> oops, oops. <laughs> Now, next Rebel possession, another turnover. And Cam, when you force five turnovers like the Bulldogs did, you got a good chance of winning. You do. Four in plus territory. The last one, you take in for six. It makes it easy for an offense to put up 56 points when you do that. That was Juju Hughes, of course, out of Hanford High, getting involved in the party. And then it's Hokett again. Third touchdown of the night for the, for the uh, national level wrestler there. Fresno State finishes with eight touchdowns in total, six coming on the ground. Jeff Tedford gets a big win here. 56-27 is the final in this one. So with the win, the Dogs now 3-3 three and three overall and 1-1 one and one in the Mountain West. As you saw, quarterback Jorge Reno, very good in this game. He completed about two-thirds of his passes, nearly 230 yards through the air and a touchdown. Used his legs at key points as well, as you saw in those highlights. 47 rush yards, also had a touchdown on the ground. The Dogs who came in averaging just over 140 year, uh, yards rushing nearly doubled that output, finishing with 260 total as a team. Wheatfall was the leading Bulldog receiver, although a bunch of guys got involved. Carrick had four catches for 86 yards. Defensively, not only did Rice have that fumble recovery for the touchdown, but he also led the Dogs in tackles with 10. And what a nine-minute stretch cam that was for the Dogs there in the second half as the lean ballooned, ballooned from eight points to 36 points in a span of only nine minutes. Here's Coach Tefford afterwards with Cam. Well, anytime you're in your division, it's big. And to come back home and kind of erase last week was big for us. Guys really worked hard, were really focused. And I'm happy for them. They played well. The defense stepped up, did a nice job tonight with all those turnovers. Uh, we were efficient offensively. I uh, was able to throw it and run it. So, uh, you know, it's a good win for us. Um, and now we'll go back to work. We'll learn from this one, and we'll go back to work. Cam, you did a very good job nodding right there. You know, that you're, that's, a, that's a trained that's an art professional. Form. Yeah, sorry, it is. That's an it was a good, good nod. Good <laughs> nod right there. All right, back here with Cam. Let's delve into this one a little further. We talked last week about wanting to see a complete performance from Fresno State. I think we got that last night, or we, Friday night. We, we did. N not only does Jorge Reina get protection, use his legs to be effective, 
really efficient in the passing game, but we saw a defense that really exploited a one-dimensional offense. Once they made UNLV throw the football, it was feast time for that secondary. That's what you want to see. When you play an inferior opponent, you want to see one side of the ball dominate when they can, and, and that's what we saw Friday. That's what we've been waiting for. We've been waiting for them to dominate an inferior opponent, and that's what they were able to do Friday night. Yeah, they, they bottled up Charles Williams all night. I mean, this guy is a great runner. Um, you know, the kid out of Fresno, I'm sure he was motivated. He came in averaging about seven yards a carry, but I think he averaged just a little over three yards against the, the dog. What did they do well against him? Yeah, I mean, they, they really bottled him up. That's a good way to, to say it because not only does he run hard, he can break tackles. He has legit breakaway speed. 100-meter finalist in, in California, you have legit speed. They did a good job of staying uh, with their assignment, and I think the addition of Michael Walker as a perimeter defender, it just added some athleticism. So if Charles Williams did press the edge, Michael Walker was able to string him out until he got some help coming down. So this defense is a better defense overall when Michael Walker is down near the line of scrimmage. And they're opportunistic, and I think that's big for this defense because we've seen them give up some yards last week against yep. Air Force uh, specifically, and we've seen them give up some big plays even in the UNLV game. But when you get five turnovers, you can't ask for much more from a defense. No, you can't. Well, maybe if Aaron Mosby scores that <laughs> one or Juju gets in the end zone, you could ask for that. But when you set up your offense in plus field position, it just it makes their job so much easier. They don't have to execute all the way down the football field. One chunk play, and now you have a sure field goal, and you're knocking on the door of putting six points on on the board. When you go to the island and play Hawaii, you have to be opportunistic as a defense because they're going to make plays. Hawaii is going to make plays in that run and shoot. If you can use this game as the recipe for the rest of the season, even if you give up some big plays, if you can turn the ball over, set your offense up in plus field position, that can be a recipe for this team to continue to win like they did Friday night. And offensively, it kind of seemed like everybody was, was getting into the party. Yeah. It was a Friday night party at Bulldog <laughs> Stadium. But leading, leading the charge was Jorge Reyna. And, you know, uh, obviously he's had some, some really important plays kind of go against him this year. Yep. But the whole body of work, I think, has been pretty good from Jorge Reyna. And I think on Friday night, it was clearly his best performance of the it, year. It was, for sure. It all kind of came together. And, you know, you and I, we've been talking about this for a couple weeks. A lot of people have criticized Jorge Reyna because when this offense doesn't look like it's going well, it looks like Jorge Reyna's not playing well. That's not always the case. Friday night, we saw him get protection. I think he did make improvements in eluding pressure. Okay, he didn't float in the pocket. He was deliberate in his motion. He either got out to run or he got out and kept his eyes down the field. And then we saw receivers get open. If you can just give him time, allow those routes to develop, he'll find those guys. He really will. He's very efficient when he has time. And then I think the addition, that zone read game that he hasn't shown since the USC game, honestly, pulled that out at a critical time in the second quarter where UNLV was not expecting it and it was very very effective I expect that to be a portion of this offense moving forward but this is this is the blueprint for him honestly to get pressure step up try to pick up yards with your legs or allude to find guys don't float be deliberate and then when you do have the chance to keep that zone read keep it and be effective now he's just got to slide he's got to slide when those defenders get around but this was by far the most complete performance this is what he can do when he's protected and clean football as well. The offense did not turn the ball over uh, again. All right, so up next for the Dogs, uh, they welcome Colorado State to Bulldog Stadium next Saturday, 4.30 kickoff in this one. So Red Wave, get out there and support the Dogs. There's no excuses for this one, right? 4.30, 4.30 kick? Saturday, let's go. Get out, get your, get your soccer done, get your basketball done, get out there and, and support these Dogs at 4.30. What can they expect from Colorado State? I know Colorado State only has a couple wins on the season. Uh, Pretty good offense, though. What, what kind of challenge do they have? Yeah, present? they're physical. Colorado State's going to come in here and try to do what UNLV did, try to run the ball, control the tempo. They do not want this Bulldog offense on the field against their defense for an extended period of time. Another physical test for this Bulldogs defense. Can you stop a team that is going to come in here with the game plan to be physical and run the football? They do that. This offense is going to feast Saturday night, and there'll be another big Bulldog victory. And then you kind of have the gauntlet after that, right? Do. Uh, I believe you have <laughs> Hawaii, Utah State, yep. and San Diego State after that. So then it'll get really interesting, yeah. <laughs> especially if you can get that win over Colorado State. Thanks, Cam, for coming by. It. Appreciate it. That was a lot of fun.